close your eyes a few seconds and think about a data scientist. Is it someone who just build machine learning models and deploy them into production? A data scientist's job is actually more than that. Data exploration is a huge portion of a data science life cycle and requires a lot of statistical modeling. This first video will cover some statistical fundamentals required for any data scientist and data analyst. The population is the entire group of all the items that we are interested in. We can consider a population, for instance, as all the citizens from Ivory Coast. But the problem here is that it can be kind of difficult to collect all the information about all the citizens because not all the citizens from Ivory Coast are living in Ivory Coast. Some people might be living in the United States, in France, and also in other countries. This is one of the reasons why it is difficult to collect all those information because it can be very expensive. If you want to go in all the countries and interview all those people originally from Ivory Coast, it's also time consuming. That's one of the reasons why we use a sample rather than a population. In Instead of going for all the citizens from Ivory Coast, we can, let's say, collect a thousand randomly selected people who are Ivory citizens. When collecting a sample, it has to respect two main characteristics. The first one is randomness and the second one is representativity. A random sample means that all the elements have been chosen randomly. We cannot choose someone with gray hairs or someone taller with a specific hair or someone with a specific weight. And the second part is representativeness. Like a sample has to be representative. We cannot just focus on men or women. During data collection, we can come across different types of data, and these data are of two main types. We have categorical data and numerical data. Categorical data correspond to a group of categories such as brands or even postal codes. And we have also numerical data, and in numerical data, we have also two categories. We have discrete data and continuous data. What is discrete data? So discrete data is something that is countable, information that has a limited number of values. It can be the number of children someone has. It can be also the number of awards that someone has received. When it comes to continuous data, those are not really countable, but they are measurable and can be like the weight of the person, the number of calories someone has consumed, the number of distance someone has walked or run. So these are the main types of data that we can encounter when performing data collection. One of the main aspects during the data analysis is to perform the measure of central tendency. The goal of measuring the central tendency is to have a single value that can represent the data we are working with. And we have three main types of measures. We have the mean, the median, and the mode. They have to be applied to the data we're working with in order to know which one is the best. So starting with the mean, the mean also known as the average represented as mu for the population and x with um, overhead sign to represent the mean of a sample. So the mean is like basically the sum of all the values divided by the total number of value in that sample. If we take um, let's say this is an example of computing um, the mean in Python. So we have this subset of seven values. The mean will be the sum of all these values divided by seven. Running this in Python, we have 12.28. We have one issue when computing the mean. If we have a value, for instance, which is 53, 53 is larger than all those single values. So it can kind of push and bias the mean, right? So let's say we not consider 53 in the analysis and compute the mean. It will be roughly around like 7, like not even 7. It will be less than 7. But the fact that we have included that 53, it has 
pushed like the mean toward a much bigger value. That's one of the problems when on computing the mean. And that leads to using the median. So instead of using the mean, we can use the median that is not really biased by larger or smaller values. So the median is basically the middle value after ordering the data into an increasing or decreasing order. So after performing that, we take the middle of all the values that we have. So we have two main cases. If we have n to be an odd value, then the median is going to be the nth value plus one divided by two if n is even the median is going to be the nth divided by two plus the nth divided by two plus one and we take the middle value of all these information so to make it specific let's consider this scenario where we have this data um, we have this sample of data. Step one is a range of data in increasing order. So increasing order, we get this value. The step two is to identify if we have an odd or even number. N is seven, meaning that we have an odd value. And then the third step is to take the middle value, which is n plus one divided by two. We are basically going to take seven plus one divided by two which is the fourth value. And we'll look at the list. We have one, two, three, four. Then the middle value is six, which corresponds to the fourth um, element in the list. One of the benefits of using the median is because it's not impacted by extreme values, extreme larger or extremely lower values because these values are mainly at the beginning or at the end of um, the sample that we are analyzing. After the median, we have the third measures of central tendency, which is the mode. The mode is basically the most occurring value in the data and can be applied to both numerical and categorical values. This is important because in the case of mean and median, we cannot use categorical values because they are only bounded to numerical values. So this is one of the importance of using the mode. We can use also Python to perform the mode in these data sets. So in this data set, we have to identify how often each value occurs and take the most occurring one. And we have five that occurs only one time, nine occurs one, two, three times, and for all the remaining other values occurs only one time. In this case, the mode will be nine. Nine is the most occurring value in um, the data. So the next measure is the measures of shape. The goal of measures of shape is to have an understanding of a distribution of the data set that we are working with. And there are two main techniques. We have a skewness and kurtosis. The data is said to be skewed when its probability distribution is not symmetric around the mean. This symmetry is explained here. If we have not this normal distribution, because this one is a normal distribution, in this case we have the mean, median, and mode all have the same value here. This is a normal distribution. So any distribution that does not respect this scenario is said to be skewed. Let me explain. So the first one is the positive skewness. The positive skewness happens when we have the mean, which is greater than the median and also greater than the mode. And a scenario of the positive skewness is the representation of the exponential function. So in the exponential function, we can say that the distribution of the data is positively skewed. This positive skewness is also called right skewness. So the right skewness is like we have the tail that is toward the right. If we don't have positive skewness, then the other way around is the negative skewness. When we have a negative skewness, it means that, you know, the left side is the one that contains 
um, more values than the right side. In this scenario, we have the mode in this case, which is higher than the median and the median, which is also higher than the mean. And any illustration of this is the beta function. So in the beta function, as you can see, we have this uh, distribution here. So we have the mean, which is less than the median. Now let's have a look at um, the second technique, which is the ketosis. So what is ketosis? Ketosis basically tells us how the data is spread out around the mean. Like, is it flat, completely flat? Or is it totally centered and picked around the mean? We have three main types of ketosis um, that we can observe in the data. The first one is uh, the mesocortic. The second is the leptocritic, and the third one is the um, platycritic. Let's have a look at what each one means. Basically, the mesocritic is a normal distribution. The mesocritic is when the ketosis value is equal to 3. If we don't have a normal distribution, then we have either a leptocritic or platocritic. An illustration of leptocritic is also known as positive on ketosis. This is when the ketosis value is higher than 3. This is also referred as a peaked distribution. So this is when the distribution is kind of picked, you know, it's like pulling and pulling to the top. If we don't have a leptocritic, so like I said, we have a leptocritic where we pull the distribution of the data to the top. So in case we have a platycritic, this is when like you're trying to push on the distribution, putting like it's like punching the distribution to the bottom, you know, trying to putting a weight on the distribution. So this is where it comes common, kind of flatter, you know. This is where uh, we have a platy um, critic. To identify if a distribution is on platy critic is when the kurtosis value is less than three. And using the kurtosis technique can be a good way to identify if we have outliers in the data. This is the Python code um, that's gives an illustration basically of each type of on distribution of the data. As you can see, we have a normal distribution here in orange. The blue one is um, a Laplace function, which corresponds to a leptocritic. And the third one is a platycritic, which is a uniform distribution. So this is the first part of the foundation of statistics. Um, I will be covering additional videos about this foundation of statistics. If you like this video, I'll give it a thumbs up. And also, as you can see here, um, the GitHub source code is available here. You can access the source code on GitHub. Just click here on the link and the source code is available here yeah you can run the code and go through all the steps thank you for watching this video and see you next time bye bye